Hello and welcome to Travel and Young, and today it's just Ma and I. Yes, hello. Yes, Mom is Miranda. She's off on a work trip, and uh, so we're just doing this, you and I. But I think it's an interesting topic that perhaps she can maybe dive into. Yeah, we can re-enter the subject. During the next live stream, so yes. she can get her word in. But for now, it's daddy and daughter. Now that we've been here five years, if you've been watching us recently in live streams and stuff we've talked about, our five-year anniversary, Yes. we wanted to talk about how our perspective of the United States of America has changed since we've been living away from there yeah. now for five years. Yes. The daddy and daughter version of what we think about that on this week's Traveling Young. All right, here we are, and let's let's dig into this topic of how we feel about the U.S. since leaving. And I want to start with this, which isn't country specific necessarily, but the idea that when you move away from a place, you get so disconnected from the people that you had otherwise been had as part of your life, and that's one of the most difficult things when leaving. I find, and we talked about this in the live stream, is that. Friends that I had that I would hang out with and make plans with or making plans, you know, I have been for five years now without me. <laughs> and some of them I may never even get to hang out with again. Yeah. Uh, friends and, and family and stuff. And, and It's crazy to think about, you know, like, I mean, I think when we moved, we never really had the expectation that we were going to stay. Um, but now it's so weird to think about, you know, times you said goodbye to family or friends and not even knowing that that might have been the last time that you'll ever see them. Yeah, I mean, I hate to weird. be super negative, but you know, I mean, of, I don't think it's. That I know, negative. but one of my it's aunts, just... one of my aunts passed away um, over COVID. Yeah, and the last time I saw her was at my grandmother, her mother's funeral, and um, she was probably one of the one of the more closer to, to us, um, and she was healthy the last time I saw her, and uh, she didn't die from COVID, but uh, she passed away at that time, so I couldn't travel back for the funeral, and uh, it was, uh, yeah, it's. It's weird. I think one of the last things I said to her, I think, was she always she was always worried that we wouldn't come back, and and visit and stuff. I said, oh, I'm gonna come back. My baseball cards are here. Of course, I'm gonna come back. You'll see me again, you know. And uh, yeah, those things like like it doesn't just stop in time when you leave no. and then restart again when you come back. Things are moving without you, and because of that, that then has an influence on what you think and feel about the country because the people you are around that you spend time with that you have conversations with, that you have dinners with, they're the ones that also, you know, that that's where some of your feelings come from about where you're from. And if you're not talking to and spending time with those people as much, that has an effect on your feelings. And so I feel myself in this five years so disconnected from the U.S. now. And the information that we get feels mostly negative mm -hmm. um, because we're not around positive people yeah. that we would have lunch with and go have coffee with and see in the supermarket that are Americans that help kind of bring the humanity to the yeah. to the country. And I feel like it's pretty rare being in Europe that you ever see a new story about something good in America. <laughs> also, I mean, you know, like I get it. I mean, bad news stories are more interesting probably than a good story. Well, yeah. But and just um, news in general is to like people that just have normal days isn't news. No. <laughs> but yeah, it's... um. Yeah, it's just kind of hard just looking at the only news that we get is just like negative stuff and never getting to see like the like real like real, you know, good stories and real people and real lives that are happening there. Yeah. And so I think we because of that, we've kind of fallen into this, at least I have fallen into this like uh, situation that probably Europeans maybe have, which is. You know, you when you only see that, you start to associate that negativity with the country as a whole. Um, I mean, the country is massive physically. So when something bad happens in like California, um, that's like ridiculously far from where my parents live in D.C., for example. So it's not like on their front porch or anything. Yeah. Um, and so you lose sight of scale and, and the fact that there's so many different communities and so many different, you know, kind of types of people in America that all have different experiences. You lose all of that and you just see 
the, 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 the stuff that is challenging that makes America feel like it's very polarized. Now, I mean, it is polarized. It is, but, but that feels like that. I, I agree 100% that it is, but I feel like that like magnifies yeah, the I polarization agree. and make it seem like that's it. Like the people, you know, but... Everyone is hating each other or something. Yeah, and I mean, when it comes to, you know, a little bit about politics, not specifically on any party or anything, but all parties, all politicians are basically actors at this point that are just creating a persona to be on TV and to try to have a policy that they say the best politicians are the ones that you never see because they're just focused on policy and trying to fix problems right the ones that we see are the loud ones that are actually just actors <laughs> most of the time right and that's the news that you get and then you start to apply that way of thinking to everybody mm -hmm. which just isn't real yeah and like I don't think it's a good way to look at the US as politicians being a like representative microphone, oh, yeah, yeah. like mic which is ironic because that's what they're supposed to be they're supposed to be you know a rep rep representing large groups of people to be able to make their interests into a real thing but i feel like what's you know i feel like what's happening is like there's so many people who are just saying their opinions and it's not you know maybe matching a lot of the American people and then like a lot of people outside of America like Europe just see that and think that everybody does actually think that way. Yeah. And they're just like chasing sound bites and stuff too, you know, where uh, the hum humanity of things is requires debate and conversation, yeah. not like a three second thing you say. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, like you and I were watching something on TV. It was like a couple months ago. I think m mom was out of town. It was just you and me. And it was like a thing on C-SPAN, which is like a local... I don't know. Well, it was on YouTube, but I think it was an interview from C-SPAN, which is like a lo local political U.S. thing that they just kind of non-biased politics stuff. And it was a Republican and de Democrat talking about, I, can't, I think it was like technology and the impact of China and all these countries on, on technology in the U.S. And it was like they were normal people talking like normal stuff. And, and I would probably would normally not sat and watch this entire 20 minutes of them talking. But I'm like, I was... I was comforted by the fact that they were like reasonably discussing with each other yeah. uh, a topic that pertains to everybody and had a ton of common views on this. And yeah. that's the that's the stuff you rarely see yeah. in and politics. I wish it was more how it was. Yeah. I mean, I know it's there, but it's because so, you just have to search for it. It's yeah. somewhere. And since we've been gone so long, you like are less likely to search for it and you're more likely to just kind of see those quick things. Yeah, and click on the big news stories. It's like, blah, blah, yelled at blah, blah, during uh -huh. the whatever. But because of that, I mean, I have a fairly, I don't think negative is the right word, but not the most positive view of America at the moment because I get very frustrated by all this polarization that I see, all the stuff in politics which dominates so much of the news that we see less about average people doing amazing things. Yeah. And since we're so disconnected from the amazing people we've been friends with our whole lives, we're not seeing it from them because we're not engaging with them every day. It just makes it really difficult to not have this just kind of like, I hate to, I don't know a more neutral word than negative, but <laughs> view of the US. And, and then when I live my life here, I feel like things are kind of relatively okay and smooth. And I mean, we have some bumps occasionally, but Nothing that's like ground shaking, no. you know, the way that something can happen in the U.S. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, you also have to think about the fact that Denmark is 5 million people and America is like huge. Yeah, I know. I understand that. But still, I mean, uh, yeah. it's, it's still a country. It is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I feel like I, I'm I, I, and this has been a progression over the time we've been here. And a lot of that has to do certainly COVID because that disconnected us from the U.S. even more. For like two years, really, we didn't even go and see people. And so that really made it hard also and created a division. So now I just, everything I see, I'm like, I mean, I feel like it's like a, a head palm moment mm -hmm. every other day when I see news of something that's happened. And yeah. it's like, why aren't people trying to change this? Yeah. <laughs> like, it just makes me wish I was there so I could like actually do something. Because, you know, we're, I mean, since we're abroad, basically the only thing that we can do to like make a difference is vote. Yeah. And we can't like get out and like do stuff really. Yeah. And this is, um, uh, so this, this is one of the things where I feel guilty about moving here because we, while we didn't move here for the purpose of getting it away and escaping the politics, we also aren't helping at all. Um, and I have good friends. One ran for Congress and was in the U S Congress for a term. Another one ran for local stuff. People that are like getting more engaged in policy 
all this polarization is actually creating like a new generation of people wanting to be involved in politics to create change, which is positive. But I feel bad that we didn't participate in that. And maybe we should have. Maybe we should have, as Americans, tried to help create some change for the positive. I also, and I feel a little guilty that we kind of bailed and came here. <laughs> but I also feel like after 2020 or during 2020, people, the average American person kind of realized that they can actually like go out and do something. Like I feel like before then it wasn't very, like the only like political events were like super organized, like really, really organized, like the, you know, the women's walk and stuff like that. But um, I feel like after 2020, people realize that they can just go out, just, you know, stand on the side of the road with, I don't know, some of their friends or something and just, I don't know, get out, make some difference, mm. share their opinions. And I feel like that wasn't, I didn't really see that as much when we lived there. I think so. it maybe skipped a generation because I feel like, I feel like, like my parents' generation, obviously, like that was during like uh, all the, all the civil rights issues and yeah. all that stuff. People were out doing things. My generation did like virtually nothing in terms of po politically. And now your generation has this new cycle of, of needing to be engaged because yeah. of the polarization that we have today. We're super into it. And so I don't know if that's just like a human thing. If like we get some kind of like, a, you know, anthropologist to study like human <laughs> evolution and when you go through these cycles and we were in a down cycle as our generation. That I we're guess just kind of like historical hanging cycle. tight. But now I feel bad and guilty. I haven't done enough. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it, it is interesting and no matter what, when you move away, your perception of home is going to change because you do disconnect more and more, especially when you made the decision to stay wherever you've gone to. Yeah. Now you're, we're committed here, <laughs> which makes it even more of a, a disconnect and puts us in a situation where this like perception of home is just, uh, not quite what it was when we, and I don't want to say I thought it was like rainbows and butterflies and stuff before. Um, <laughs> but I do think. You know, all the information you can get, all of it being, most of it being somewhat negative, also some of it not even being true, um, makes it hard to, to, to kind of like walk away feeling super positive. Although yeah. I know there are amazing people doing amazing things there. And when I'm home, I feel that way. Yeah. But that's just a week or two weeks a year. <laughs> yeah. And then we're back here. Anything else you want to share? I don't think so. I don't know. Yeah. Well, we'll continue this conversation on yes. the next live stream, which will be May 9th. Yes. Tuesday. We'll let Miranda jump in yes. with her ideas. But if you have anything in the meantime, put it in the comments and maybe we can bring it up on the live stream because this is a really interesting topic. And I bet Danes that have moved to other countries also have different feelings about Denmark after they've left because yeah. of new things they've seen and experienced and less information about Denmark while they were gone. So... Let us know if you've had that kind of experience yourself. It's always interesting to talk about these topics. Always. For that, we'll, we're going to say goodbye for now so yes. we can, uh, I don't know, watch probably TV. Probably sit here still. Sit here still. I'll probably stay on this couch. <laughs> no, I'll go edit this video. All right. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.